take it away, Drew. Thank you. So as you introduced me, I'm Drew. Um, but today we'll be talking about uh, Pineapple Wi-Fi, um, which is brought to us by Hack5. So we can get right into it. There we go. Um, so what you see over here on the right is the Tetra and the Nano. They're sixth generation auditing tools. Um, so they're kind of refined. The networking, um, there's a lot of things that they've improved and updated, and uh, as we'll see later on, they've uh, brought it to, I'd say, more mainstream users. Um, so it's pretty easy to use, simple point and click things. Um, yeah, move forward. Uh, so here's some hardware specs for those who are interested in that. Uh, just to point out some differences between the two, uh, in case you're looking on purchasing one yourself. The main difference is the hardware that you're purchasing, not the software. They're both going to be running the same uh, modules, essentially. Uh, the Tetra, however, has the benefit of far, farther um, rate, uh, radius range to uh, you know, spoof your, your Wi-Fi, so you can be farther away, and uh, that's good. But there's also the fact that you can put the Nano in your pocket, so if you're on the go, you can Shove it in, uh, keep, keep going. Um, so, the overview of our functionality here um, on the right is scan, um, then we want to target, uh, intercept, and the last one's report. So, for scanning, we have uh, both listening to the uh, air for client devices as well as the access points. Um, and later on, the images will show kind of how it's displayed and how we can uh, then go on and target these by the MAC address and filter out who we want to target or attack and who we want to prevent. So as Mac talked, Max talked earlier this year about uh, security, pen tests and such, it's really good to scope it out and so you don't want to have uh, unnecessary victims. So that's a very key important part of this and they make it really easy to use. Um, and then intercept, so it's very simple for you to uh, gain victims and clients onto your own network, uh, spoofing and acting as the router yourself and getting people to connect to it. So um, we'll keep talking about that. And the last one, report, it's allow you to uh, maintain persistent connections and actually email updates of the changes in the status of those on your network. So what does it look like to um, <laughs> general people? If you walk into a room, well, you're probably going to see just your, your normal uh, Wi-Fi spoof networks. Um, but uh, I've found out that on Macs, you actually only see a single uh, network. Versus Windows, you see both the um, locked, <laughs> locked and unlocked networks. Uh, don't know why that is. But uh, yeah, for your victims, it's just free Wi-Fi, you know? Just come join my network and uh, check it out. Um, oh, there it is. And so it's, it's really simple to use. It's uh, point and click man in the middle, essentially. So the steps to getting yourself in that position is um, you know, you, you know the, the MAC address from scanning the network, listening to the client air traffic, where your devices are sending out probe requests for looking for, um, say, it's a secure Mustang wireless or some other SSID. And um, your, the uh, Wi-Fi pineapple will be listening to that, register that, and then it'll start sending back out, hey, I'm secure Mustang wireless, or I'm whatever network you want me to be, really. So uh, after adding the MAC address to your filter, you can go ahead and uh, click on the user, the MAC address, and um, send deauthentication frames, which will inject into the uh, current connection, say, like, kick off the network, and it'll kick them off. And then the next time they try and connect back to that network, your uh, Pineapple Wi-Fi will hopefully have a stronger signal strength that will cause the uh, users to connect to your device instead of the actual access point that they want. Um, and so, yeah, he'll just gradually accrue uh, the victims until you get all the ones you want. Um, oh. So convincing the client to join your network, uh, simply getting them off of their network, 
um, and making them believe that you are the uh, SSID that they want to join. And it does that simply by increasing the power of the signal so that your device um, chooses the, the best signal for the network. And that's how it selects which access point in the room to join. Um, and then there's other features on it like uh, uh, sending beacon response frames to continually tell the uh, device that is connected to your network that, hey, I'm that, uh, as I'm that network that you wanted to join. So continues the authenticity and maintains your clients. So uh, what can we do as man in the middle? Um, I mean, really, it's up to your imagination. There's quite a few things. Uh, simply passively eavesdrop on someone's traffic since they're running their traffic through your Pineapple Wi-Fi, through your computer. You can simply read all the traffic that they're sending, um, do whatever you have with recon that is. Uh, you can direct their traffic. So say they want to go to X website, you can say, well, no, actually, I'm going to feed you this website because they're running through uh, your connection. Um, then something like, you know, getting their bank login credentials, that's probably pretty scary to most users of any sort, tactically um, sound or not. Uh, so that's something to get people, you know, scared, like don't let them get man in the middle. Um, but then some funnier things like manipulating their content. So imagine you're reading a political article and instead of, you know, the candidate being uh, Donald Trump for said this quote, it's Hillary Clinton or someone else, uh, just manipulating the integrity of their traffic. So, and then, you know, flipping, flipping the uh, orientation of things. Anything, can anyone think of something interesting that I didn't list just for interactivity? Man in the middle, something? Yeah. And it could like, replace all instances of cloud, but it could be like a cloud plus extension. <laughs> it's silly. Exactly. You do really whatever you want. Okay. Can you middle the DNS? Can you middle the DNS? Yeah. So uh, essentially, their computer is uh, going through your router. So you own all of their connections. Whether they want to go to Google.com, you can send them to your landing page. You can send them to who knows where. So you know similar fake sites if you're actually trying to like gain their SoundCloud credentials, like, oh, here's my SoundCloud, but looks exactly the same. Um, uh, yeah, all sorts of dangerous, cool stuff. You have all the power, essentially, when they're connecting through you to the internet. So <laughs> why is this happening? Well, your computer is going down the list of uh, SSIDs on your um, your list and seeing, well, I want to connect to this one, this one, this one, this one. And so you might be auto connecting to a Wi-Fi pineapple just because it's on your list and your device is sending out probe requests saying, hey, can I join home network? And well, you're at work, but home network is now available. And so uh, your computer will join that network. So uh, as we discussed the hardware, this is the software side of things. Um, runs both on the Nano and Tetra the same. Um, what we're looking at right now is the tab dashboard. And it's just going to display the browsers, uh, just overall statistics of who's connected on your network. Shows you see 27 clients connected. The SSIDs in the pool are all of the um, SSIDs that it's listened to. And it'll save them over. Uh, multiple uh, different sessions. So when it sees a new uh, probe request for x.y.z, uh, it will absorb that. And next time, it will broadcast that out. So new people who are looking for x.y.z will join you. Um, and then, like I was saying, the landing page browse, browser stats, the different uh, uh, browsers that are connecting. So. Um, now we're looking at the uh, recon tab. And so as you can see, you can select either access point only scans or access point and clients. And this is 
basically showing that all of these uh, MAC addresses are uh, clients who are connected to the guest Wi-Fi network. And to get them off of that network, these uh, bottom arrows right here are simply a uh, click and then deauthentication injection, um, and then choose how aggressively between 1 and 10. Uh, and so you can select a uh, access point and then kick everyone who's on that access point off, or you can attempt to uh, just go individual by selecting the user themselves. Uh, and now we're looking at the uh, um, so allow associations um, essentially says what anytime someone's requesting uh, any type of SSID that uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple will then spit out saying, hey, that's me. Um, without selecting that, you won't allow them to really connect to you. Uh, you then have the other tabs here, uh, log probes, log associations, um, just essentially seeing that for later. Uh, make sure you're getting the right people. Um, you have the capture SSIDs, which means you're grabbing that uh, populating that SSID pool so you can, you know, not add more if you want to scope down to a certain group or a certain SSID. In the case of pen tests, you're only allowed to use a certain SSID. That's the only area or network that you could uh, kick people off of. Then you wouldn't want to keep growing that pool so you don't get any unnecessary victims. Um, Uh, and so this is the log of your clients who have requ probe request um, for Wayne Enterprises guest. And then, so it shows that they associated with you, so now they're on your network. Um, they also have one for the linksies down here. That's just more uh, logging information of all the clients. And so this is a list of all the modules that um, you can download. Uh, these are all created by the community. Um, some of them are administrators that actually work for Hack5, uh, like Seb Kine and Whistlemaster are both admins for Hack5. Um, and so Nano and Tetra both have essentially the same modules. These are take them down. A lot of these names are pretty familiar that you'll see, TCP dump. Those essentially are just running the same thing um, as a GUI on your uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple, yes. What are some of your favorite modules? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I would say uh, D-Wall. It simply just like displays everything that is going on at the same time, like any connection, any images that you're searching, uh, until people figure out that you're running that, and then they just Google image search, Google image search, Google image search, and you're uh, just populated with hundreds of images. Um, then the other funny ones like random roll, uh, it's a Rick roll, just like <laughs> high, highly probability uh, chance that you just get sent to a Rick roll page. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, SSL splits like a, a functional one, so that one is probably the uh, uh, favorite in that regard. Oh, and so as you can see, this is the second page of the modules. There are quite a few um, options. I haven't taken a look at all of them, so hopefully one of you guys get the chance to uh, check out the other ones that I've missed and point them out to me. Oh, funny thing about the uh, evil twin back up here. Evil portal, sorry. Uh, the first time I was using that on the Nano, it actually bricked the whole device causing, I un, so I, I took the, I, I downloaded the module and then I was running it and then I didn't want to use it anymore so I removed the module and as it was now supposedly removed um, through a simple point and click on their GUI, it was still persisting in every, t every connection that people were making and it was just the ghost, ghost evil portal which was more evil to me than it was to them uh, and I had to reset the whole factory set the whole thing. 
Uh, but yeah, that was on 1.0. So 2.0 is hopefully uh, not cause that problems. Yeah, plus that was intentional. <laughs> I don't, I evil evil to me? Yeah, maybe. Uh, um, so this is the old UI. Uh, it's got the black and green of the hacker. Um, I think it looks cooler, but you know, like I was saying, they mainstreamed and made things a lot smoother with the uh, sixth generation. They've really refined everything. Simple point and click for just about everything. Uh, so, just SSL strip the uh, one of the modules that they have. Uh, so, what's going on with this is it it um, forwards all traffic that's non port 80, but then when it sees port 80 traffic from your client, it looks at it and manipulates all the uh, links to transform them from HTTPS to HTTP. Uh, so that way, when they all clink those. Facebook.com, it would go to a, uh, it would send it over HTTP. But there came this um, HTTP strict transport system, uh, HSTS. Uh, I don't think I called it properly, but it's essentially the uh, demise of uh, SSL strip, which Moxie introduced in 2009. So uh, to combat it, they made it so browsers would now have a list of domains that would say, hey, uh, I'm Facebook.com. I only want you to talk to me over HTTPS at this certain time. Um, so to get around that, the uh, cat and mouse game here, um, the new version uh, essentially transforms your, your links on the page from Facebook.com to some subdomain that isn't on the uh, list. So when the browser DNS searches, your DNS manipulates it to get the, the proper uh, IP address of Facebook.com, but sends it back and says, you know, go to uh, 4www.facebook.com. And it'll send it over HTTP because it's not on that list. However, it will actually get to the, the proper uh, place because the IP address that was given is correct. Um, and so these things are all you know, hidden from you, but they're simple point and click on your Wi-Fi Pineapple. Uh, so it makes it kind of nice. Smart people made awesome tools. And this, we already a little talked about it, but some of the other modules like random roll. Um, and you know, they uh, provide a nice community that's really helpful. There's a forum that's uh, consistently, new people are asking questions, people are responding. The uh, uh, community is, I guess I'd say, live. So if you have any questions, any problems, there are quite a bit of times where you're frustrated because certain things aren't working properly, but they get back to you, and that's uh, nice. So um, a little short on this, I guess, but uh, is there any questions I can go ahead and answer? Yes. What would happen if you took, say, 15 or 16 Wi-Fi pineapples and just all use them at the same time? Um, I don't know. I haven't uh, tested like that. Would they all like, interfere with each other? Or would, like, would the device be able to pick They would all probably race to complete, I mean, like, to uh, attract the clients. I mean, if they're all targeting the same client, yeah. it would just be like a race condition, like, Join me, join me, join me. But uh, they wouldn't obviously work together. They're all individual, isolated. But uh, that'd be neat. Also, to point out, um, there's a class that offers you the chance to uh, work with them, which is Introduction to Network Security uh, with Dr. De Bruel. Currently. Currently being taught, yes. Ah, there's the nano, yes. Yeah, this is the nano. Uh, they let us, for some reason, they let us use one. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us an access. They also gave us a GSM. One. Oh, yeah. They also yeah. have this. Yeah, okay, cool if you're class. going to Europe, you're going to be doing things with this that I can't really say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. What is the legality status of uh, Wi Fi? 
Uh, I mean, they're not any, they're, so they don't break any FCC rules, but you should, you know, restrict attacking other individuals' computers the same way you wouldn't hack someone else. It's the same thing. I can't, I don't know the details, so don't take, <laughs> I'm not the lawyer here, so don't take, take my word. Use it. <laughs> you can't use it for nefarious purposes. It's a spy on your own traffic. Yeah. How can I prevent my computer from automatically joining whatever network has in society? Uh, well, you could explicitly join them by uh, going down your list, but uh, preventing yourself from being targeted, you can't really stop that. Like, it, like if your, your device is going to probe request and the Wi-Fi pineapple is going to pick that up and now it knows um, what you're looking for so we can send something back to you. There are protocols like Secure Mustang Wireless is on 802.1x, which prevents um, the Wi-Fi pineapple from getting people off of it because the protocol is different and requires the uh, y yes. Well, so there's an access point uh, which is considered the authenticator, and your device, um, the supplicant, sends to the authenticator. Uh, your information with the certificate, and then it sends it on to a server who does the authentication and sends it back to the AP who sends it to you and saying, here's a legitimate network, come join me. So I haven't successfully determined how someone would get, off, get you on, an, on that network. So you're protected in that sense um, by setting up your network 802.1.x. Uh, but maybe someone more skilled than me would be able to get you off. I don't know. I, I don't know about the, the full details of the spec, but I, I also think that part of that standard is that you can't extend it any further. So it's part of the middle you can't access that AP because you're not allowed to. Talk, that. Yes. Like I can't even hook up an Ethernet switch. It doesn't work. So, or I think I agree with that switch. You can't act as a middleman, even legitimately, because um, I think that the way it does the extension restrictions. That's probably good for security. <laughs> I think it's the only thing when trying to add routers to the network, which is wireless things up. So, so over HTTPS, you can see the IP address that they're trying to get to, but can you see the URL? Or can you not see the IP address? Uh, you can see where they're trying to connect to, but you can't see the traffic. OK. Um, the traffic itself is included. Yeah. Uh, but not like the two. But can you see the URL, or does that count as the traffic? Uh, yeah. It would be within. The, traffic, the domain name yeah. and the URL. And uh, also, can you uh, somehow get people's Wi-Fi passwords from? There is a like if you've heard of Aircrack, there's essentially the same module on Wi-Fi Pineapple, which will uh, try and attack your um, Wi-Fi security to to gain the pre-shared secret key. Uh, yeah. So you could actually perform packet injection using this. Yeah. You wouldn't need like an alpha router on top of that. Uh, no, it, I mean, it has the packet injection. It, for, it does the deauthentication packet injection. I know it does that. I'm not aware of, of the other forms of packet injection that are available outside of like the module. Okay. So but, like, what's the difference between like using this and an alpha router? I'm not too familiar with an alpha router, so I couldn't. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a wireless adapter, alpha wireless adapter. OK. Uh, well, I know that the Nano, I believe, uses the alpha adapter. I'm not too sure about your question, and I don't know if I'm capable of answering that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like the wireless adapter, the alpha. You have used that before? Uh, I, I have not, but I believe the because wireless I've, adapter. I've seen people use the alpha uh, wireless adapter with like uh, a pineapple. Okay. So I was just wondering if you knew how those two work together. Can't say I have not. Sorry. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I hope you all get one yourself. They're pretty fun. How much are they? Oh, uh, the 100 bucks for a Nano and 200 for the Tetra. Or like 225 after tax and stuff. What does Bruce have to do? Uh, you can ask, but he's using them for class.
Who knows? does not her to ask. Oh, wait. Does someone have, do we have a Wi-Fi pineapple? Nope. We should buy one. Well, also, Zach has a couple old ones. There's a MK5 and maybe an MK4, which are the older versions since it's the sixth generation Nano and Tetra. Thanks, guys.